They've got that crunch, that hint of onion, and trust you me, you can't get enough of these. Welcome back to Serendipity's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make a crispy, crunchy onion ring. So let's get right into it. Onion rings really aren't difficult to make. They just require some time dipping them in the batter and flour mixture. The cornstarch that is in this recipe is important because it does help the flour mixture stick better to the onion. You're going to need one and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one fourth cup cornstarch, three teaspoons of salt, half teaspoon of paprika, fourth teaspoon of black pepper, and a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. Combine these really well. Into another bowl, you are going to place one cup of milk and one tablespoon of lemon juice. Mix it together and let it sit for about five minutes to thicken. You will need one large onion. Trim both ends of the onion and remove the outer skin. Then slice the onion into half inch rings. And if you need to, take a moment to wipe those tears. Separate the onion into individual rings. You might want to start with pushing out the center of the ring first and then just work your way through all of your slices. If one breaks, I wouldn't worry about it and would go ahead and use it. You can use most of the rings in each slice, but you might want to set aside the smaller center pieces of the rings for some other use. Before we begin breading our onion rings, we're going to need to have a place to put them after we bread them and after we fry them. I have used a cookie sheet with a cooling rack on top. There's enough room to have both the rings that haven't been cooked and those that have. The final step before frying the onion rings is to batter them. Place your flour mixture, liquid mixture, and your cookie sheet next to your onion rings along with two forks. We are going to dip each ring in the milk mixture and flour twice. So first place your onion in the milk mixture using one of the forks, shaking off the excess milk, and then coat it with flour using the other fork, shaking off the extra flour at this time as well. Repeat this step. It is important to do it twice because in my testing I made some onion rings that I only dipped once. The coating was definitely a little thin and the onion was showing through. So be sure to bread each one twice for the best results. Into a four inch deep skillet, you want to place two to three inches of vegetable or canola oil. Then turn your heat on to medium high and heat until a thermometer reaches 350 to 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't overheat your oil or your rings will burn before the onion is fully cooked. Once your oil is hot enough, carefully using a fork or some other suitable utensil, place about four onion rings into the hot oil. How many rings exactly depends upon the size of your frying pan, of course. Fry for about a minute and a half or until golden and flip the onion rings to cook on the other side for about another minute or until golden. Once they have finished cooking, remove them and place them on your rack. See the beautiful golden color? Continue frying your onion rings until you have completed all of them. Now let's make the onion ring dipping sauce. You can also make this sauce ahead. I thought I was videoing when I made the sauce, but sadly, I wasn't. But it is very simple. Into one bowl, you will place 1 4th cup mayonnaise, 1 tablespoon sour cream, 1 teaspoon Tabasco, 1 half to 1 whole chipotle pepper. These can be found in the Mexican food aisle of your grocery store in little small cans. Mince the chipotle pepper, or if you are using an immersion blender, you can put the pepper in whole. And finally, 1 8 teaspoon of paprika. So either stir this all by hand or use an immersion blender to thoroughly combine the sauce ingredients. A 
And just an added note, the chipotle pepper does not make this dip spicy. Now it's time for the taste test, the best part of all of this. And I am so eager, I've been dying to get this. But then I had to take a shot for you. And so now I finally get to taste it. So, So good. What do you think? You think you'll try these? Let me know in the comments below. Alright my fellow foodie, we'll see you next time.